Hello everybody, this is my first tutorial that's exclusively Maya. Um, I have another one that uses both Shake and Maya, um, so check that out. Um, it's a pretty cool tutorial where you actually um, paint, um, take a character and actually um, paint them as a fluid, a 3D fluid that actually turns into smoke. Um, so that's a four-part video um, that uses both Shake uh, compositing program as well as Maya. This is my first tutorial that's exclusively Maya and I just wanted to talk a little bit about modeling. I'll try to keep it under 10 minutes but we'll see. Um, just I'm not modeling specifically one thing I just wanted to talk about all the different tools and things I've learned so I'll stop talking and get to work. Um, first thing I'll talk about well, a big thing is is finding uh, reference footage, so I'm building a full city, um, and a lot of this is going to be seen pretty far away, so I'm trying to keep the poly counts low, because obviously there's going to be tons of geometry in there, but I have all these reference images that have been helping me model stuff, and I wanted to talk... Um, one important thing when you're getting modeling, even though it might take a little longer at first, is to really... Um, do things and think what's a new tool I can learn because really you're going to be a lot faster once you know all of the tools so I've been kind of even sometimes going back and redoing something um, and seeing if I could do it faster because while well, it might take a little bit longer it'll take a lot longer the next time so like for example this radio tower so I went in and modeled it and I noticed these were at an angle so I angled them in and then I had to place all the bars but I had to rotate them each one and it was kind of a different rotation and it was taking a really long time and I was about half done and at that point I'm like okay there's got to be a faster way to do it do this so what I ended up doing um, was I created it just flat like this and then I went under a lot of your um, modeling tools are under polygons but there's a section create deformers which can be really helpful um, that's under the animation tab um, and yeah the nonlinear ones are really nice um, I did this for uh, created a cylinder with five or so subdivisions height and for use the bend to create like a handle um, kinda like that one there um, on a trash can, um, but yeah, what I've ended up doing, um, and I'm in my four view over here, and a helpful hint that I've learned um, is to navigate is hit the space key, go over top of another one, and go back in, and this is very helpful. Also, window outliner will show all your things, and it's really important is staying organized. Um, yeah, um, I have one or two that aren't grouped, and you can see it's. Um, getting messy even with one or two things but yeah what you want to do is you know just select all of these and hit control G and I'll put them in a group and groups are really flexible if you want to add something to it or um, anything you can pretty easily change it and then it'll um, move accordingly but what I ended up doing for this and I want to find it in here so I can just select it is um, I created a um, lattice for it, which really, um, so I grouped these together and then created a lattice for the whole thing, and yeah, what that does, um, one thing you should get really good at doing is right mouse over something, and that'll let you um, select whatever you want, um, so you can go from object mode to lattice point. Now I've got the lattice points that's affecting the whole thing. If I go to R and start scaling this, um, it won't look great at first, but that's because you have to scale all of them, and it's important that you scale the base. Um, and yeah, you just want to get them moving bigger and bigger. And there you go. So that's basically what I was trying to do. Um, it made it a lot easier. It's affecting the entire thing like that. Um, another way I thought of doing it 
it would have been faster but not as quick as this way um, would be um, the cube is definitely very useful but um, I just wanted to say the cylinder um, is very very useful um, and you can kind of um, if you go under create and then polygon primitives and then I, I went under cylinder and kind of created it the way I want it and I'm trying to keep the poly count low so I have it set open the outline of the right one over here um, I have it set to be 14 around because that's kind of the the first point it starts looking really circular um, which keeps the poly count a lot lower it's normally set to 20 which sometimes I use if it's going to be something shown up close but um, really it's almost having your polygon count and it looks pretty circular then I also turn off the subdivision caps um, by editing it there um, I generally don't like those as much when I model but what's really nice about this you can affect the 14 and like I was like oh how do I create a stop sign well subdivision 8 boom scale it down like that as far as scaling um, moves up and down like this um, I've also found if you go right click and go over face um, so if you have the bottom lined up right where you want it you can just extrude this way or even move around the other way and well, let me delete uh, go back into object mode delete this object um, so in the scale what I found is yeah these inputs um, well you can effect if you click this and then you go over here and use your middle mouse you can switch it um, and I found you really want to kind of start out by setting up setting it up um, so you have the right amount of subdivisions and you can kind of add them in later here's my personal tab um, I won't go into too much how I created it but um, if you create a new tab, anytime you go over something and uh, if you hold down the control and shift key it'll add it um, to your and you can add any tools that you use. So these are ones I use a lot, um, extrude and um, center pivot I actually use a lot, that's really important because um, anytime you group something um, you probably need to well I think I've modified it for a lot of these but anytime you group something it'll be way out of there so I just do that all the time um, another way to do this um, pull right here um, is um, okay so I want the height to be pretty tall um, Maybe not quite that tall. Um, th this is just testing, and probably the other way is a better way, but it, I guess it sort of demonstrates. Um, and I'm going to do subdivision width, subdivision height, actually. Um, so add in, you know, um, 30 or so of those. Um, and yeah. Then one, two, and the depth. And then, yeah, what's really nice, um, if you go into edge mode, if you double click on something, you can move it around, manipulate it. And when I'm manipulating stuff, I almost always use these arrows. Um, occasionally I'll find times where I don't use the arrows, but most of the time, um, I want to use the arrows. This would be a good time to talk about uh, camera base selection. Uh, so if you hold down Q and then hit the left mouse, you get this new menu. Um, so if I do camera base selection, um, I want to be in face mode. If I do camera base selection and if I just click, it'll always just grab this face. If I drag over something, I'll select multiple faces. But if camera base selection is on, it worked right. See these here are not selected. Um, so it's only what the camera can see at that moment, which is I switch this on and off all the time.